Now we have Xcode installed, we can go about developing our very first app. But first we should take a look at the interface of Xcode so that we know what we're dealing with. I'm developing this in version 12.5. The version that you're gonna have might be a bit later, but don't worry, everything you learn on this course is gonna move forward with you. So it doesn't matter if you're working in version six, it, it all works. So firstly, we need to create a new um, S code project, just the top one there. So just double click around there. It'll open up our window and your first thing you'll see, you have lots of options. For iOS, you can make apps, document apps, games, augmented reality apps, sticker apps, and messaging apps. You will notice that there is an option for multi-platform. These are the apps that go across devices. So you can make something once for iOS and it will work automatically in Mac, maybe in TV as well. Or maybe you want to develop just for TV or just for Mac. What you're learning here on Swift ports onto all Apple devices, which is a really powerful tool. But we're gonna focus on iOS apps in this course because we've only got so much time. I'm gonna go ahead and just create the single app. So double click on app, and I'm gonna give it a name. So I'm gonna call it um, my first app, and organization, UXD, whatever it is, You'll see the bundle, the bundle identifier is uxd.myfirstapp. That's set by what you said before, so don't worry about it. The interface we're using is Storyboard because it's a little bit easier for you to use. And the life cycle is app UI kit app delegate. Don't worry too much about that, it's just what's there. Then the language we're using is Swift. Down here, we have um, use core data. Don't worry about that. We are gonna cover that in later videos. But you can include in tests, it's fine. So we're on setup, we are now ready to go. Click on next. It'll ask you to save your project. By default, it goes onto the desktop, so we are gonna save there. So just create. And the name that it gives is whatever your NAP's name is. Generally, desktop's not a good place to save things, but we're gonna run with it for this video. So here we are, going full screen. What should we look at? Now, the first thing to look at is on the left-hand side, we've got a whole load of views. We've got view controller and we have storyboard. These are the two main areas we're going to use in the first few sections of this course. So view controller, as you can guess, that is getting into the app coding back end, which we all love, and the main storyboard part, that is where you're gonna drag and drop different items so you actually have interactive buttons and pieces. This is what people tend to think about with app development, not so much the back end, but they all work together. On the right hand side, you'll see that this area changes depending on what you've loaded. So when you've got view controller, it looks like this, and when I go for main storyboard, it changes again. So don't worry about that being different, it's just gonna change with uh, what you're working on. Now, you might want to work on more than one window at a time, which is where we have this button up here, which is like a little book with a plus in it. When I do that, it lets me have two windows. So I'm even going to love the main storyboard here, and that lets me just see visually what's happening, as well as the controller on the left, so I can go between them. You'll notice that I clicked the button on the top right, which puts the right hand column away, or I can bring it back. Now, it never goes away completely. If I just move my mouse over to the right, it will pop back in, so it's never really lost, but you know, it depends on the size of the screen. If you have a large monitor, leave it up, a small monitor, put it back. If you want to close one of these windows, it's really simple. I can just click on the X, and there we are and we can click on the uh, little enter icon here to show different versions. We don't really worry about that too right now. The other thing you want to know is that in Xcode, you can preview your app. So I've done some coding, got my name here. This is the most basic app in the world. There's nothing really there, but I want to preview it. I want to see how this looks on my iPhone. So at the top here, I can just click down and say, well, I'm gonna view it on an iPhone 12. And then in the top bar here, I click run. 
And what it's doing is it's compiling this into a virtual iPhone so that we can see how it works. We can play a whole load of things. We can really use it like it's a real iPhone. And here we are on my desktop. Just like a Apple device, it is got the loading screen as we are loading iOS. Now this version is iOS 14.5. Again, by the time you get around to using this, you might be using a later version of iOS. Don't worry about that, it's completely fine. Everything you see here will work on the simulator you're running. Similarly, you could have chosen a iPad or a number of devices. This is because when you're developing an app, there's no point in making it work on one device if it doesn't work on others. So there's four different iPhones out there. It must work on all of them. Anyhow, here we are. It's a white screen. Why is it a white screen? It's a white screen because we've not done anything. We've not put any buttons. But if you look at the top here, in menu, I can device, I can say home. It takes me to the home button. And there we are. I can take a mouse and I can scroll around a bit. I can get the device and I can rotate left. I can rotate right or just put it back wherever I like. I can enter photos and pieces and you see, it feels just like an iPhone. But there we are, I'm gonna click the home button again, go back here and enter my app. So if I was really doing some programming, I would be using this. You're gonna use this feature a lot over the course because who's got time to really publish an app? That doesn't work, nobody. And also Apple don't let you do that. So I'm going back into Xcode. One other thing to look at here, at the very top, we see the My First app, and we see all the details that we put in at the very start. So you can update things, you can change things, but there we are.